I think the first point I want to make is that uh, shortly after arriving uh, here in Cape Town, I had the pleasure of attending the HIV Research for Prevention meeting, uh, which was given the hip-hop name of HIV R4P. Um, I now uh, uh, appreciate, as you should, that, that uh, in fact many advances have been made in preventing or trying to control the HIV epidemic. Um, these uh, include a number of methods to prevent uh, the acquisition of HIV. So there are lots of tools now in our toolbox to try to protect individuals. For example, male circumcision we know protects 60% uh, of circumcised men. So many men in Africa have voluntarily stepped forward to have voluntary circumcision. This certainly will have an impact. With prevention of mother-to-child transmission, we've seen the rollout of ARVs that's significantly uh, reducing the number of infected infants. Uh, in the developed world uh, from getting HIV. There's treatment as prevention, which as you know can be used to protect uh, individual partners who uh, have partners that are infected from getting uh, the drug and prep the use of antiretrovirals for prevention. Microbicides are moving along, particularly the vaginal rings with antiretroviral drugs in them. But ultimately, a safe and effective prophylactic vaccine will be essential for the ultimate control of HIV within the context of these other prevention technologies. So even though there are a lot of tools, uh, we, we still uh, will need an HIV vaccine. Now, I know that many of you may not be well aware of how vaccines work. Um, and this is a slide, a busy slide, and I apologize for it, for how vaccines work. But in a nutshell, the points I want to make is that, in essence, vaccines take whole or subunits or parts of microbes or viruses. These can be inactivated. They can be uh, put into a vaccine with an adjuvant, perhaps, particularly if they're non-replicating. They can be administered by a variety of routes, including um, a, a shot or mucosally. And once these vaccines are introduced, the antigens, the viral antigens, for example, can get picked up by antigen-presenting cells this will induce initially an innate immune response, which we won't discuss immediately uh, here now. But ultimately, those innate Im immune responses protect early after exposure. And in the meantime, the B cells will be activated to produce antibodies, which may have neutralizing or antibody-dependent uh, cytotoxicity activities, and the T cells will be activated. And there's a variety of T cells, T cells that help, T cells that suppress, T cells that regulate. Um, and ultimately what is done is after these immune responses are initiated, after a period of time, we end up with memory cells, in this case central memory cells, that uh, on re-exposure to the pathogen will uh, uh, re-turn uh, on the immune responses to try to control that infectious agent. I think all of you may be aware that one of the holy grails of trying to control HIV is to generate broadly neutralizing antibodies. There are now more than 30 broadly neutralizing antibodies that have been identified and that are specific for conserved neutralizing targets on the envelope of HIV. But importantly, all of these broadly neutralizing uh, antibodies require an extraordinary level of somatic hypermutation. What this means is that the B cells that produce these antibodies take a very long time and have to go a lot, undergo a lot of mutations in order to uh, generate these antibodies that can broadly neutralize HIV.
The other thing is, is that these uh, antibodies tend to be auto-reactive against host molecules, raising questions about their real utility because they will interact and affect uh, host molecules. And also these broadly neutralizing antibodies so far uh, for the most part seem to have very long arms. They're almost like extended antibodies that glomp onto things. So they have a very unusual structure uh, and they're very uh, uh, they function in a, in a way that they can access uh, recessed uh, uh, antigenic determinants. The other important thing is that the individuals who generate these broadly neutralizing antibodies after many years and many mutations and changes in these antibodies, they don't protect the people that generate them. So these, uh, but nevertheless, these monoclones may be uh, useful uh, as passive antibody protection. We're also concerned that there has to be a speed up of clinical efficacy trials to test these next generation of HIV vaccine candidates. Uh, this will require cooperation of industry. It's hoped that industry will help advance clinical development, manufacturing, regulatory affairs, uh, product development, and downstream licensure, uh, and the capacity to produce and deliver an HIV vaccine, to mobilize resources, including industry, government, and additional uh, dollars fund from uh, philanthropic uh, uh, people or groups. Uh, we need to expand the current vaccine pipeline against HIV, and we need robust preclinical challenge studies um, to prove uh, that these uh, work. Uh, 